Number 40 is a question you, or a game you had mentioned that you were wondering where it was going to fall um, before we started this video. That is a, I, would, I will always try and play it as a campaign. We really got into a point where we were actually uh, dressing up yeah. to kind of yeah. get the feel. This is based in the Depression time period. You trying to run your own speakeasy, per se, and avoid getting raided by the police. That is number 40, the opulent. I love the historical theme with this, how each year you do 1919 to 1929. And each year deals with something that was going on during that time period. Yeah. The game doesn't, the core game doesn't change as far as each year. So 1919, 1920, 1921, all the way to 29. The core game doesn't change. However, you do have to adapt based on the challenges that are presented in each year. Right. One year, you're going to get less money from women. One year, because of um, women's strikes. Um, another year, you're going to get, um, you're going to be risking potential customers for the rest of the campaign um, because mobsters, Italians, or Irish will shoot each other if they're in the club together. So you really have to manage who you let into the club because you'll lose those customers for future scenarios. Those are the easiest ones to serve when it comes to, to alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't want to lose a lot of those because you won't be able to use them for the rest of the scenario or for the rest of the campaign. Uh, there's another one where it's mobsters will leave the club, which kind of ties into it if they are caught on camera with an actress. So every station that this actress moves to, the club, those mobsters will leave for good. They won't come back. Mm -hmm. So you really have to manage that. Um, there's one where you're competing with another speakeasy. So you you have to pay off the per, the uh, person that's going to go blow up their speakeasy so that you're the only speakeasy that's succeeding. Um, yeah, take care of the competition. Correct. Uh, you, four stations, so you can play a two-player. Each player plays two. I played through a whole campaign with my brother. We ended up winning the campaign. We had a fairly good speakeasy at the end of it all. Um, we started one, kind of died off because we got busy. And, and we kind of didn't manage it well. We didn't manage it well, and we played... A few things incorrectly which led to our not managing it well uh -huh. um, so and we had a sour sour ending to it which kind of left the group astray I still liked it so my, my brother and I kind of picked it up and we played through the whole campaign in a period of about three days I want to say um, great great game one a lot of its dice card management so one is the doorman rolling dice letting color dice letting politicians are great Politicians are blue, aristocrats are green, mobsters are red. Um, so you roll the dice and you let those people in. Those people will cycle through the stations. The band deals with music cards. So they're trying to play so many cards to get people off the dance floor, which will continue to profit the club. The bartender is serving those different people. Uh, mobsters like beer, the which is one item. Politicians like ice and alcohol, which is two items. Aristocrats like ice, alcohol, and fruit, which are three items. You decide who you're going to serve. You count the items that you're including in all the drinks. You roll the dice and you try and beat that number. Um, you have to restock it throughout. Then you have the, the club manager who is kind of helping those different stations throughout the club. Great game. Has a great historical tie-in. Each scenario has a write-up of what was going on during that year. At the epilogue, it talks about how your club did following that. Um, I'm wishing that they'll be able to find a way to expand this, um, but it was another Kickstarter of mine. Great game, The Opulent, number 40. Number 39. I don't know how you feel about this. I know it has been talked about when we've talked about me doing a top 100 long time ago. Um, that is number 39, Get Fit. It's overrated. You think it's overrated? <laughs> There are other games that are that I compare to it, as far as in my mind, that are higher. So when we get to there, I'll, I'll mention those games. Um, get Bit, I like, I think for the time that I found out about it, for the fact that you you owned it, kind of helped me like get, get plays of it. 
Um, again, going back to the simplicity of things, um, you can teach this pretty much anyone. It's got the toy factor of yeah. the, the swimmers, which you can get kids to like it for that reason. Sure. Pull, they enjoy pulling off the pieces of the individual swimmers. Mm -hmm. um, this is all card play. You're trying to stay in front of the line so you don't get bit by the shark. Um, if you play the wrong card, you're going to be at the back of the line. The shark's going to bite you. Be the last person with pieces left on your Lego body. Um, great game. They actually have Walk the Plank, which is a predecessor to this. I haven't played it. It seems like a decent game. Seems like a good game. And they also have a card game that I'm not sure of. It doesn't basically you're underwater and you're trying to swim to the surface. Um, and you're playing cards to do it. There's not much of a game there from what it seems like. Do you have no legs and no arms? No. Is it after the shark's bitten you to pieces? Um, I'm guessing, maybe I guess this could be, not necessarily, this could be between Walk the Plank and Get Bit. Maybe it's Walk the Plank, that one, which I can't remember what it's called. It'll probably be up on the screen, and then Get Bit. Now you're up in the water and you got to swim to shore. Uh, That's maybe how I look at it. And the shark's chasing you down. Yeah. Um, so Get Bit, great game, great simple game. Uh, kids will love it with the toy factor. Um, I enjoyed it enough to make it 39. That is Get Bit. Number 38, game that's higher on Dave's list. This is a game that you're dealing with racing, tug of war, drafting cards, hidden information, yet public information. Be the first one to the portal. You're in front, you go towards the, the vehicle that is the closest. Oh, grab wall. Gravwell Escape uh, from the Ninth Dimension, number 38. Wow. I think that was in your top 20. I think. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, it may have been my 10. Could have been. Um, so Gravwell, number 38. This is a drafting game. You draft from semi-public information, meaning some of the cards are public, some of the cards are stacks of three cards. One's public, the other two are, are private, or Maybe it's stacks, it's stacks of two cards. One's public, the other one's private. You really have to consider, is that card worth it? Each card is worth movement, numbered movement, um, as well as a couple cards give you, like, push the car, push the vehicles away or pull the vehicles towards you um, in a slingshot-type manner. Um, you're racing to get off the board based on once you draft all those cards, everyone drafts all the cards. It's not always 100% knowledgeable because not all the cards will be in each round. Um, you then play a card face down. Everyone does this and everyone reveals. And then at that point, you do your movement based on priority and closeness to other um, spaceships. Very good game. Um, I enjoy it a lot like David does and for a lot of the reasons that David does. Um, it's... Not as simple as you would think. There's a lot of strategy behind it. Yeah. But I love it for the moments of, man, you ruined everything. I thought you were going to go forward. Now you're going back. Man, I thought I was going to go. Those kinds of moments are the the, the aha moments that really get you. It's almost to take game. that game. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it's unintentional, too, a lot mm -hmm. of the times. Unintentionally intentional. Um Kind of out guessing your other opponents yeah. and stuff, which I like. That is number 38, Gravel Escape from the Ninth Dimension. Still too low. Well. For you. <laughs> number 37, I have won this game every single time I have played it, with the exception of, I think, the first time I played it, and I think I got second playing it. Survive. Escape from Atlantis. Survive, Escape wow. from Atlantis, number 37. Why do you say, well, I didn't think this would be on your list. Or if it was, I thought it would be lower because you've not played it that many times. I have, actually. I've played it, I believe, I believe Josh also owns it. Mm, that might be it. Um, there's been a few times that I played it that you didn't because you were playing a different game. Oh, yeah. Um, I played it with Ryan over at um, Ren's house. Okay. Um, yeah. And a few other people. I played it with you and Craig and sure, all the sure, sure. ones. Um, I have played it at uh, Hillmar before. Mm. Um, so this, I mean, this is a 
I want to say I played it about seven times. It's a game you get. Yes. And I get it just for the sake of knowing where to put my players, I think, and knowing the the way to make people think that I'm taking uh, higher numbers than I really – than they think I am. Mm-hmm. Um, or kind of outguessing who's going to – which people they're going to try and kill out of my – people that are trying to get off the island. Have you ever kamikaze to boat? I have. Nice. Yes, I have. And I've kamikaze a high-level boat, meaning myself having a high number, knowing that I'm going to get higher numbers in Just that process. Yeah. Um, so, Survive Escape from Atlantis, great game, number 37. Number 36. Simple beyond simple. Tile lane game, mazes. And I combine this with its sequel, Dragons. Sequel is oh, Boats. Oh, Sorrow. Yep. Sequel is Boats. Um, so it's Sorrow or Sorrow of the Seas. Yeah. Um, I've only played Sorrow of the Seas a few times, maybe twice, yeah. once or twice. Um, I like the puzzle aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I like just the mm-hmm. dynamic, as far as the look of the board. Um, it reminds me it's of an pretty. old, reminds me of an old like game you'd find in Japan or something, yep. just on a desk called Dusty Up, kind of like a Jumanji type sure. game. Um, I need to show you the picture of the Tron rework that somebody did. Somebody made a that's Tron what it rework. reminds me of, is Tron. Yeah. Um, great tile lane, trying to be the person that stays on the board the longest. Yep. Uh, you place your tile, your, your piece goes to the end of whichever line your piece lines up with. Yep. There's other lines that go there that will create other routes later on in the game. But you play it, you move your piece to the end of the line. Next person plays it, they move their piece to the end of the line. You're trying not to run into the other player's pieces or run off the board on accident or on purpose, depending. Um, Just run other, other people on. off the board on Correct. purpose. Correct, based on your <laughs> tile placement. So yeah. I like that push and pull mechanic. Yeah. I like that that simplicity there. That is Suro number 36. Number 35. I want to say that this may be the highest racing. No, it's not. Never mind. Simpler out of the two of them. Racing game out of my top 100. Deals with pirate ships. Okay. Going around an island trying to collect treasure and get to the get back to the port faster than everyone else. This is Jamaica, number 35. Yeah. I, I like um, that. That's a good pick. The, the way that you move your ship along, I really enjoy. I like that you play a card and you use the left first and the right second. I like the control you have as the ship. Um, I forget what it's called. Ship captain that rolls the dice and chooses which of the two dice yeah. goes first, which of the two dice goes second. Um, and then that applies to the card that you play. Um, it could be that you're collecting meat. First and then moving backwards second. It could be you're collecting gold second and you're moving forward first. Really depends. You get to choose that after the dice are placed, so you do have control, not necessarily doing it blindly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like, I just like the the different types of things that they include there. I like the the race that goes on. I like the encounters of the treasure that you go to. And the management of what you keep in your boat. Um, I know that there's an expansion. I'm excited to try that out. That is number 35, Jamaica. Okay. Number 34. There's an app for this game that was developed post-game. Deals with marbles. Bejeweled type game. Um, this is a great development as far as from other games that were apps long before. Uh, this is Potion Explosion. Very similar to Bejeweled, very similar to all those types of games. Your number five, this was 34 for me. Um, very similar to games like Bejeweled or um, Champions or Marvel Champions. Yeah, it, it, not Champions. Puzzle Quest. Puzzle Quest. Um, you pull a color and whatever hits. That's the same color you pull. Um, basically, the the board setup of this is amazing. I wish I had it next to me. I would pull out the, the box or the roller. We're probably going to do a live play of it. I'm thinking. I know he likes it. Oh, yeah. 
um, to be able to play that. It's obviously number four for you, five for you, so I'm sure we'll, we'll get it to the table so you'll oh, yeah. see that. Um, but this is a great game uh, to introduce to players that, or people that like apps, they can see that you can do anything with board games. I like that as a gateway game. Um, that is Potion Explosion number 34. Number 33. I have yet to play every game in this collection. There is endless possibilities for this specific game. Made by the maker of Flux. This was his uh, modus operandi. It's Pyramid Arcade. Now, technically, I guess you can pull any of the games in the arcade and classify them as their own game. I include the entire collection yeah. because that's what it's meant to do. Um, I like the idea of users submitting their own games based on this very simple system of pyramids. The Ice House Pyramids. The Ice House Pyramids. Um, so I like the expandability of it, the replayability of it. A lot of the games are very simple um, as far as like an idea of tic-tac-toe sure. with the pyramids, but a kind of uh, a morphing of that, a morphing of like rock, paper, scissors. Um, they have as a game which you're like, well, just play rock, paper, scissors. Why are you including that in the arcade? It's cool. I mean, they do they do other things. The color wheel I've had some great times with. Yeah. Did in our, our live playthrough, 24 hours. Um, but there's tons of games I want to try on there. I want to do a marathon sometime where I do all the ones in the book. Um, sometime I know that would be a high endeavor because there's so many of them. And there's even user-submitted ones on the website. So... Great job, Looney, uh, Looney Labs. Uh, that is Pyramid Arcade, number 33. Number 32. This is an extension of a previous one with a retheming. Um, the previous game was Forbidden Stars, or Among the Stars. Yeah. Among the Stars. This is actually a retheming towards farming, um, which Dave got to play, be the first player in this because. He has was the last person to go to a farm. This is Fields of Green, number 32. Some people like this game for the sake of... Some people don't like this game for the sake of maintenance. Kind of like um, Agricola has the feed your... I think it's Agricola, right? Feed your feed animals, your family. feed your family. Um, I don't think it's as punishing in this game because you don't lose if you aren't able to feed your water, you just get damaged crops, which you can replace. Um, I like the combination that they have with this in drafting slash yeah. tile placement. Yeah. Drafting slash tile placement, not really, you don't really see that mechanic very often. Um, with the, the kind of smaller portion, that, well actually I guess it is bigger, of managing your crops and putting water towers close to your crops so that you can irrigate them correctly. Um, but I, I really like how the drafting comes together. I like how you get to pick what gets in the drafting pool. Every player gets to pick what's in the drafting pool based on the four different types of things, either buildings, crops, whatever. I like how you get to pick that in comparison to Among the Stars where it's kind of forced on you. Um, a lot of players don't like that picking portion as much, but it's uh, something that kind of hits my uh, interest, I guess you could yeah. say. It's number 32, Fields of Grain. Okay. Number 31. I played this with my brother recently, only the two-player variant. Um, you were interested in it when I was explaining it. Um, I played this twice so far, but I really like it. It's the top game of this type on my list. That is work replacement, top work replacement of this type, or basically on my, my top 100. There's not very many other ones. This is Asking for Troubles. Mm -hmm. um, I want to try and play the four-player game. I want to play even three-player. I think yeah. it probably shines at four. Probably. Um, Two-player, was there wasn't very much going on. Um, but it, I, <sighs> it's a simple work replacement. I like Lords of Waterdeep. It fell in my top, I think, top 150. Um, yeah. This is my top work replacement, I believe. Um, 
as far as strictly like focusing on that. Um, but it's simple enough. I, I, the iconography is what I really like about this game in comparison to like Lords of Waterdeep or other worker placements. The iconography, I know first time I got it when I was explaining to him, I said, hey, here's the board. Tell me what each of these places means. And he was able to explain each and every one of them without even looking at the rule book, which tells a lot um, about being able to grasp it as a new player. Now, building your ship and how you're going to build your ship and adjust those spots changes things. Oh, of course. Um, but it's a great introductory worker placement game. There are variants where you can kid variants where you don't include the um, building your ship and getting additional things at each spot. Kid variants. Yes. Um, which, if you were trying to introduce it to a new player, you could play it that way and then adjust it kind of based on their experience and stuff. Um, great little worker placement, number 31, Asking for Troubles. Okay. Number 30 is a fairly new game. It's a re-adaptation of a 1969, 1979 game uh, done by Rob, Rob Gaviel and Restoration Games, as well as, forget the other developer that helped him with it. Um, App-driven, strictly as opposed to phone-driven. <laughs> this is Stop Thief, number 30. Now, this could be recency effect. I feel like it is. Um, it could be recency effect, but I hesitate to say that due to the fact of the t amount of times I have played it. Um, typically, if I play a game a lot, I get burnt out on it. If I don't get burnt out on it, it means I really like the game. Um, meaning, if I get burnt out on it, I probably won't play it for another year minimum. Mm -hmm. Um, like for example, look at Deception, we, a yeah. little of that has to do with player groups, yeah. look at Resistance, Avalon, look at a few of those other ones, um, that we played this not out of, and then I was like, yeah, you know what, I don't even want to touch this game for probably another year. Um, so that's kind of how I judged this one was, if I've played it a lot and I still want to play it, even now, in comparison playing it, and I compare it to, okay. How many times have I played this game in comparison to those games that I got burned down on and didn't want to play? Again? Sure. How do I feel about it with that knowledge? I still want to play Stop Thief. Okay. Um, I still think about it. Think about how how many different types of things they can add to this game. I think about um, all right. I want to try the blue character who uses is a, has the ability to go through windows. This is the deduction game. The app is the suspect. It tells you where this. It moves the suspect around the board. You uh, cue in on that based on audio clues that you get each and every turn, um, and you move your uh, detective to the area, trying to get there faster than the other individual. Wow. Now, the one negative side of things is luck. There is yeah. a luck factor of you may just the next once one person's apprehended, the next suspect that comes out may be right next to. The person because they're on the other side yep. of the map or you may get two captures in a row because you're just luckily next to the person however i haven't ran into that in an extreme nature where i've apprehended someone and then within the next five turns i've been able to capture them they've been in the same area but i've really had to narrow it down yeah um so, there's always a lot of narrow down correct um, this, I've played with my kids at work. They've enjoyed it. I've played with you. I've played with family. Um, they've enjoyed it. I rank it high because my family enjoyed it, I think, too. Um, sure. And they really grasped it from the get-go. The kids really yeah. liked it. They grasped it from the get-go. Um, and I still get the urge to play it um, to kind of try, and try new things, I guess you could say. Okay. That is number 30, Stop Thief. Number 29, we're getting very, very close, guys. Number 29 used to be known as the gateway game for years. It's getting overtaken by other games. Um, dealing with, and it has expansion upon expansion upon expansion upon expansion. Mm -hmm. Dealing with trains. This is Ticket to Ride number 29. Okay. I have yet to play Europe, which kind of upsets me because someone at this table owns Europe. And um, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> through watching people play Europe and through watching videos of, of Europe being played, Ticket to Ride Europe being played, it seems to me like a better game. 
uh, with the tunnels. I like the tunnel, yeah. the addition of tunnels. Um, tunnels make it more challenging. Yeah. Correct. And that's, I think, what I think needs to... For me, in my eyes, I want to play that to get my... Re rejuvenate my enjoyment for the game. Okay. It is so high because it was the first extreme game, not extreme, like hobby game, hobby game Desire per se, game, yeah. that I bought. Um, okay. I bought it with other games, but that was one because looking at it, looking at reviewers talk about it, that so many of them talked about it being a gateway game. And so I got it because I was like, all right, if it's a gateway game, this will be a gateway for me to get into the hobby. Great way to get, get into the hobby. Um, which brings it up higher, I think. Yeah. Ticket to Ride, the basic is very simple. It has got kind of played out, which is why I want to try out Europe. But um, I've enjoyed each and every time that I've played it more times. And I've probably been one of the ones I've played the most out of every game that I own. One of the ones. Um, okay. That is number 29, Ticket to Ride. Okay. Number 28, Sports again. We're back to the sports. Now, which sports do you think this uh, is? I feel like the only one that would be... Just say the sport, not the game. Oh, um, football. Nope. Racing? Nope. We've talked soccer already. Oh, baseball. Okay. Now, I say baseball because there's two baseball there's, games. There are two baseball games. That, and I own both of them. I feel like this and they both fall in the list. The shorter of them, he is absolutely correct. The, that is the, bottom of the ninth. The half in game. <laughs> uh, bottom of the ninth. Another kind of variant that I'm working on to combine with uh, Soccer City, um, as far as ideas and mechanics used in the game on how I'm going to develop my basketball game. Um, that is bottom of the ninth, basically. Outguess your opponent or out bluff your opponent um, and roll well, I guess you can say. It's short enough to where you can play multiple games. You're yeah. playing in the bottom of the ninth, which kind of brings it away from me. It, I want to be able to play a baseball game that I can play the entire nine innings yeah. in one sitting. However, I do understand that that could be tough. Baseball and very can be a long game. The actual game of baseball averages three hours. Um, if you're going to turn that into a board game, how long is that going to be? So Not three hours. Maybe. Maybe. It could be. Um, it'd be difficult to get all the intricacies of baseball and make it actually feel like a baseball game, I feel, in under three hours. Yeah. Because pitch, swing, pitch, swing, pitch, swing, pitch, swing, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think would lengthen it out. Yeah. Bottom of the ninth, you really feel like you're playing a full inning of baseball. And it is about 30 minutes to play that full inning of baseball. Well, half inning of baseball. A tense bottom of the ninth, yeah. though, yeah. is a good it, 20 minutes. Yeah. So um, I really enjoy this game. It's going to be an inspiration, and it is an inspiration for game, other games I'm developing. Baseball is one of my top three favorite sports of all time. Yeah. Um, so great game, bottom of the night, number 28. And I have all the expansions now, which is amazing. Uh, 27. I thought for, bought this game, wondering if it was going to replace my top favorite game of all time. Strictly because of theming. Um, nope. I nope. am <laughs> trying to get involved in, in, uh, law enforcement. Um, I'm in the process there, here and there, uh, working on that. Basically, I got this game hoping that it would, because of its theming and because of its connection to my ultimate goal as a career, um, or my end goal as a career, uh, I hope that it would. Now, the problem that, and the reason why it didn't was because of the luck factor, and that is Police Precinct. Uh, number 27, Police Precinct. Very good game. It is in my top 30, obviously. I really enjoy it. A lot of the influence is on my my personal interests. Um, I have played it about four times. I want to say about four times. Um, they're all lengthy plays, which is another reason why it doesn't get to yeah. the table very often. Um, hey, Sam Healy, one of his top favorite games of all time. 
Twilight Imperium. So that I don't think length should affect it too much. Um, mm-hmm. But there's other games on this list that I think are better um, and give me the yeah. same type of appreciation. Um, Police Precinct, again, you're moving around the board, co-op, trying to get clues, get witness the right people, or get, get the right uh, witness, get the right um, murder weapon, and then catch the criminal before he leaves. You're moving around the world in the sense of kind of like a pandemic type movement. You are you have so many movements, and then depending on where you're at, you combat different crises that are happening around the city, but you're also having to investigate this crime before the time runs out. Um, that is number 27, Police Precinct. Really good game. Didn't beat out my, my favorite game of all time. Not even. 26. Mentioned this game at the top of the broadcast. Like, 100. Oh. Last episode. Yep. And this is a game that you own. And I have never once had a bad experience with. Dealing with real world, a uh, real world, uh, Political. Oh. Um, Article 27 made it all the way up here. Article 27, the UN Security Council game. Um, this is a game that has not got played enough. No. We don't necessarily have a good group for it as far as sides goes, I feel like. Yeah. Um, four, I feel like it shines at around five. Five. Five is probably the, yeah. one of the best. It doesn't extend out too long. Right. Um, this has a good negotiation little negotiation in there yep um you really have to be strategic about where you're investing your time and your efforts um i think that it really gives you and i i'm huge in the theme sam healy you and i are the same um this really gives you the feeling that you're in the security council and you're making decisions on different um political agendas and you are basically looking out for your country's interests obviously based on those political agendas but you also have to kind of be aware of other people's wants or interests other countries wants or interests great game like to play uh more number 26 article 27 the un security council game Number 25, this is going to be a theme. Not necessarily a theme, but there are there will be one other game that is very comparable to this on my list. That is number 25, Unlock. Mm. Escape yeah. rooms yeah. are amazing. They they're great ideas. I used to, I'm a huge like I love riddles, I love brain teasers. Um, tying it into something where you don't necessarily have to go out for an hour and spend $25 a person to, to do an escape room experience. I guarantee you that an escape room experience would be a lot funner than board games versions of it just because of the scenery and the, the place that you're, sure. kind of, you're going through and the physicality of it. However, Unlock is a, is a Escape room game dealing with strictly just cards. Um, there's another game on this list that beat it out that is comparable, um, just because I think the theming and, and the, I love the decoder and stuff of it. Mm-hmm. Um, number 25 is Unlock. I love escape rooms. I love the idea of it. I love being able to bring that to the table. I know it is consumable. However, that doesn't bother me because I'll just get the next expansion, which are typically fairly affordable. And if people pitch in or whatever, you can have the same type of experience of going to a movie, even better experience of going to a movie, and under an hour. Yeah, because you game. get to talk. Yes, <laughs> great game. Together. 25, unlock. Number 24. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. These were each game thereafter will start to get, obviously each game thereafter is getting better and better, but... The gaps will get bigger, bigger, I guess you could say. Um, number 24, you've only played this once, if any. Um, new expansion for this is coming out, dealing with going into a dungeon. Each player, this is another variable player power game um, that does it well. You're going not into a dungeon, into a cavern a cavern as one of 
five characters with the expansion, I believe it's eight characters. You could be a warrior, you could be a goblin, you could be a dragon, you could be a, I think it's not a warrior, a knight, you could be a thief. Um, into the, the, nope. Into the, nope. Nope. You could be the cave as an option. Who wants to play as the cave that's crumbling around everyone else? This is Bass, the Crystal oh, Caverns. Oh, see, I would not play that. Um, Bass, Crystal Caverns, I like it for its variable player power. Now, the reason why Cosmic is lower is this has five with the expansion total of eight. Mm -hmm. So it's not super... Uh, confusing as far as okay, like how does this one play? They do play fairly similar, but each time you play as one of them, um, you do get the feeling of you're playing a different character. So the knight is really dealing with um, management. I like how each person is kind of winning in their own way. Each person is targeting other one other person typically. Uh, the dragon obviously is trying to stay away from the knight. The knight is trying to win by by killing the dragon. The goblins are trying to win by killing the um, killing the knight. Uh, the thief is trying to win by getting so much treasure in that dungeon. Cave is trying to win by preventing everyone from completing their goals. Um, so it's really got a nice little tug of war. I'm tugging with you, but you're tugging with this person. That person's tugging with this person. Um, everyone's trying to accomplish their own goals. Enjoy it. Can't wait for the expansion to come out. That is number 24, Vast the Crystal Caverns. Okay. Number 23, you'll be surprised at this one. This is a game that um, kind of simulates a real world thing, I guess you can say. Real world uh, hobby or real world um, encounter very, very well which allows me to respect it and enjoy it a lot more. Um, nope. It deals with guessing the forecast. Now by forecast, I do not mean weather. I have recently acquired this game because I backed the expansion to this game. I've played it more than you probably think I've played it. No. People go to Wall Street for this. Oh, uh, Stockpile. Correct. Number 23, Stockpile. Um, it is high. A, it simulates stock market trading very, 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 very well. Um, it's simple enough to grab myself and allow me to do well in it, um, allow me to get that feeling of being on Wall Street and predicting how things are gonna turn and, okay, um, I'm gonna be this character so I have this special ability, how am I gonna use it? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't played it with the expansion yet. I've looked at the expansion, kind of read through the rule book, um, watched a few videos on it. I'm interested in playing it with the expansion. Um, every time I played it, it's been with the base game. Sure. Um, but I think a lot of these games you're gonna see are simulating something. something. Sure. Um, and it's really kind of now basing it on the experiences I've had and how those tie in with mechanics that I enjoy, that kind of thing. So that is number 23, Stockpile. Okay. Number 22, Baseball Highlights 2045. Makes sense. Um, Baseball Highlights 2045 is interesting type of drafting. It's not necessarily like... It's like public drafting, I guess, mm -hmm. and card play. That's a deck builder. Uh, deck, yeah, that's what or it's doing. a team builder. Yeah, team builder. Um, not many games do team building. Uh, there is Basket Boss I want to check out. I know that's something that Tom owns. It's a hard game to find. Sure. That deals that with does that with basketball. Um, nine or baseball highlights. I think I enjoy the little the the different how they put thought and effort into each and every character, each and yeah. every player, how they kind of, they combine the two names yeah. of two like real world characters. They work in cyborgs, they work in robots. Um, I like the the idea that cyborgs have better pitching arms, um, that robots are your big hitters and that your, your humans are fielders. Yeah. It makes sense. 
Um, I have mainly played this with you, a few with family members of mine. Um, I own the full full collection, and we haven't played it as much as you would think. No. Top twenty two. Um, but I would enjoy playing this a lot more if people were up for it. So. I, I blame the twenty seventeen Giants for our lack of baseball that enthusiasm. Could be it. That could be it. Um, that is number twenty two. Basketball baseball highlights twenty forty five. Number twenty one. This fell on your top. 20 per se, maybe, maybe top 30. Um, this is the world of smog on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah, that's Majesty's like, Service. That's up there. Um, that's number 21. This game is a really good puzzle. Yeah, very good. That's puzzle. the best way to put it. It's a puzzle. Very good puzzle. Um, I love the artwork, the steampunk. Um, artwork in there it can be kind of freaky looking at it yeah um but the artwork in that game is amazing the production of that game is amazing the board is or the yeah the board the the box is alum i mean gold gold aluminum on there um you have models for everything um it's none of that like some of them are models some of them are cardboard tokens yeah. all of them are models um, the, the Mancala beads that you use for things, the cards are great. Um, this is an amazing puzzle, uh, World of Smog on Her Majesty's Service. That is number 21. 